Welcome back, everyone. So we are really excited today for a barrel pick, a collaborative barrel pick with, uh, let's call it two of my favorite channels that I just, you know, I've been really excited for this one for a long time. So uh, SLB, uh, Trenton and Kurt, uh, two gentlemen who are just crushing it in every single way. Really excited to partner with them, uh, as well as Josh and Aaron. I call it my favorite whiskey couple period. <laughs> um, and, you know, it was really exciting for this pick overall today, obviously a great group of people. And this is a brand that I really respect. Uh, so very thankful to have Ashley and Kobe from uh, Frey Ranch on as well. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I do not believe our good friends over at Keg and Bottle are joining us today, but a huge shout out to Shem um, and Tony over at Shag and Bottle for kind of making this pick uh, kind of come to fruition. So thank you for everyone. Let's go ahead and bring in our, our guests here. So let me bring on First, bring in Aaron and Josh. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey. We're doing great. How are you? Good, good. I get to sip whiskey with two, my, my favorite whiskey couple. So, I mean, that's like a that's a win all day. <laughs> Dude, we are so excited to be here with with you, with SLB Drinks, with Frey Ranch, yeah. and, and particularly on the channel front. Uh, you know, we hear so often people who watch our channel also love you guys. SLB Drinks, they love the Bourbon Judge. So I think uh, all of us kind of, operate on the same wavelength of just having fun, looking for the positivity in the hobby and just kind of being down to earth and about the people and the fun in the community. So Absolutely. this is going to be a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Should be fun. Should be fun. All right. Let's bring in our good friends, Trenton and Kurt from SLB drinks. And I think we see, uh, oh, we got Kurt. Hey Kurt, how are you buddy? Oh, oh we got you. And there's Trenton. <laughs> it's like a flying. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Still working on audio. That's okay. It happens. No worries. We'll uh we'll let them uh kind of get set up real quick while we're waiting for uh Trenton and Kurt. Let's go ahead and bring in uh Ashley. Bring Ashley on. Hi everyone. Hey Ashley, hey, how Ashley. are you? Hey, hey. Great. Colby's gonna be joining us, but um typical spring on the farm. He's just running around irrigating and getting some of the last uh, crops planted. So perfect, he will be perfect. here. Perfect. <laughs> Wonderful. Very nice. And is Adriana coming on from your team, Ashley? Um, I don't think so. No, just okay. us. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of the cool things that, you know, you guys do is it's an actual working farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we do. We um, have total control over the entire process. So everything from planting the grains, irrigating, harvesting, um, storing in the silos, milling, distilling, fermenting, aging, bottling. It's all done right in this little area. So um, it's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding. And I love that none of those ingredients have really ever left our possession until we send out samples like to you guys or our distributor picks up or people visit the tasting room. So that's so cool. That is super yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is neat. I see. I'm having some technical difficulties, but hopefully this uh, will all come together. Um, Josh, Aaron, can you guys still hear me and see me? Yeah. Yep. We got okay, you loud cool. and clear, Joe. Perfect. Wonderful. Um, can you have audio now? Can you guys hear us? Yep. We yeah, got we you. Hear you. Perfect. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Very nice. So I, I guess we can go ahead and get it all. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Trenton. Thanks, Kurt. <laughs> um, just want to say thank you again for everyone coming together. Again, uh, two of my favorite channels. This is a, a great time to kind of collaborate and partner again with SLB Drinks and Stuff and Whiskey. Just two channels that I really, really respect. I mean, and then when I think about some of my favorite whiskey on the market, I've been introduced to uh, Frey Ranch. I've had, you know, their products, you know, from the the, the standard 90 proof uh, whiskey to even one of their single barrels. So when Shim and our uh, friends over at Keg and Bottle came to us and said, hey, we have the opportunity to partner with Keg and Bottle. This is, I mean, I'm sorry, with Frey Ranch. This is like a, uh, it was like a truly a grand slam. So, so thank you again, Ashley, for making time to meet, to, to partner with us. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, love it. Happy to be here. So thank you. Awesome. All right. Well, I know part of today, before we kind of dive into the whiskey and the background and everything, um, we have actually a, a unique opportunity to help out a charity. And uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, to Josh and Aaron to kind of talk about our barrel and then the additional kind of um, charity aspects of it. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, anytime we can use I mean, we get to drink whiskey on the Internet and people watch. Right. Like that's a silly thing. It's crazy. But. If we can use that platform to put a little bit of good out into the world, we're all about that. And we try to do that every chance we get. So, 
you know, Marcus came to us with this idea about doing a collaborative pick the three channels together. And again, I, I think we're all on the same wavelength of just kind of being down to earth and all about the community. And I think we've all participated in charity aspects for the community as well. So um, we are going to be donating $10 of every bottle sold to St. Jude's help helping some kids doing some good in the world. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a ton of fun. And between these three Patreon communities that we have, we have a lot of people. So, you know, we, we want to show some support and we yeah. want to let everyone have the opportunity to participate in this. So yeah, we're just really looking forward to it. Wanting to do some good and, and you know St. Jude's is very near and dear to a lot of people's hearts in the whiskey community. Absolutely. Yeah, that's so, great. Thank yeah. you, Josh. Thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, I guess Ashley, just real quick before we kind of dive into uh, everything, any chance, I don't know if you want to give a, maybe, I know you kind of, you already did a little bit, but a quick high level overview of just Frey Ranch, you and Colby, just like the, the background, the story yeah. regarding Frey Ranch as a whole. I would love to kind of learn, I would love to learn more about it. So uh, my husband, Colby is fifth generation Nevada farmer. Um, he grew up on this land here, um, just east of the Sierra Nevada mountains in Northern Nevada. Um, his family's been growing grain in this area for um, multiple generations, even before Nevada was a state. So um, after he took over the farm in about 2009, he we really knew that all the grains that he was growing on the farm were really high quality, but they mm -hmm. were always getting exported or getting you know sent to the commodity exchange where they were mixed with other grains. And he thought, what, what's a great way for me to really showcase these grains than to produce them into a world-class whiskey? And so that's where our love of ag agriculture and our love of American whiskey really merged. And we were able to um, take the grains, the high quality grains that we grew right here on the farm, keep them in house and produce a whiskey um, using 100 percent of the grains that we grow right on the farm. So the corn, wheat, barley and rye are all grown right here within the five mile radius to our distillery, which is right in the heart of our farm. Um, we even malt our own barley on site because we didn't want to send that barley away and lose some of that control. So we malt the barley on site. We do everything here, including aging, bottling, um, and we've got a small <coughs> room and, and we distribute here too. So I was telling um, the group earlier that none of those ingredients have ever left our possession until okay. a customer actually comes and picks it up. So it's it's really a piece of us and our labor of labor of love, agriculture, and uh, American whiskey. So. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Such a cool story. I mean, you guys do everything, literally everything on site. Mm -hmm. That is so, that's so unique. Number one. And it's uh, obviously you can tell in the quality of the whiskey, I, you know, so, which is awesome. So thank you for sharing that with us. We really of appreciate course. it. All yeah. right. I don't know about you guys. Oh, go, well, I was going to say talk. real quick, if you are a whiskey nerd, I don't know how you don't <laughs> absolutely love that story. Like that is amazing. Yeah. And it is. I also want to preface this by saying how excited I am because when we were unpacking these samples, we had a little bit of a leak, not enough to compromise the volume of the liquid that we needed to do this pick. But as I was just unpacking the samples, I was blown away by how good the, the, box the smell was. So I don't know which one it was or <laughs> like who knows, but I think we were in for a real treat today. Yeah. Oh, Marcus, you're oh, muted. I got you muted, Marcus. There we go. You can hear you now. I wonder if uh, Marcus may be having a little bit of internet lag. It looks like he looks like he's frozen right um, now. Uh oh. Yeah. I do. Technology. Better. But Trent, Trent, yep, we got you now. Trent and Kirk, we had, we right. did talk about this backstage um, before you guys hopped on, and we are going to go from lowest to highest proof in order. Okay. So if you guys want to okay. arrange that way, just so you can. We're all on the same page. Yeah, Josh, I had my earpiece in when you guys were oh. speaking. So I think I've got everything arranged for Trent and I. That's a according to your piece. Well, whatever it is, <laughs> according to what you were talking about, Josh. So hopefully we'll be on the same page. Kurt's CIA awesome. Secret Service style over there. Yeah, <laughs> he, is. You know, he is. Good luck. He's, you know, uh, he's, you know, he's a man with everything mission. tech. Trenton's everything tech. So as soon as I step out of line in that category, he's on me. You know. There you go. <laughs> There you go. What do you do? I love it. I love it. 
That is awesome. <laughs> All right. So we're I think we're ready to get started. Uh so we're starting with uh so this is uh barrel number 1817 coming in at a hundred and this is 19, 119.72 proof, right? Yeah, yeah well, well, everybody's getting their samples out. I'll just give you a brief overview of our barrel program um, and, and what we're going to be sipping on today. So about 80% of our production here at the distillery is in bourbon. Um, a lot of it goes into our flagship product, which is our 90 proof bourbon. Today, we're going to be tasting that four grain bourbon, but at cash strength, which our barrel program, um, they're all store picks or group picks, and um, they are bottled at cash strength. So um, all of the five samples today are the same mash bill, the corn, wheat, barley, and rye, four grain, and they're aged for an average of um, five to six years. So um, all of it's done right here, 53 gallon full-size whiskey barrels. I will tell you, and I'll just give you a hint, one of the samples that we're going to taste today is a different cooperage than the other four. So oh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, okay. we, we did have okay. a truckload um, of barrels that came from a different cooperage about okay. five, six years ago. So we'll see if you guys Thanks, can. Yeah. Very nice. Very nice. Yep, David, I agree. I do love the bourbon community as well. All right. Barrel 1870. All right. Is it the same char on the barrel from the different cooperage than the others? They are the same char, yeah. Okay. That's a great question. It's lovely. I spilled already. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> It'll be next in our merch store is the SLB bibs. My wife says she's going to get it for me personally, but Trent, you, you Trent need needs one. them once in a while, too. Yeah, you need one. <laughs> Anytime we film anything, he's spilling stuff, and he's, his notepad is drenched in bourbon. It smells... Uh, that's that's all right. It smells good. Nothing wrong with that at all. I might have to buy, right. uh, grab myself an SLB right. uh, drink bib as well. Trust me. <laughs> that's right, Marcus. You know where I'm coming from. <laughs> We've got a good question from. The news? So, real quick, the Brandon list. Atwood in the chat asked rookie question: What is a cooperage? So, a cooperage is just the people that make the barrels that the whiskey is aged in. Yep. Good yeah, question. Great question. It is a great question. I Absolutely. get like a little butterscotch on the nose. Mm -hmm. so what this reminds me of is like there's um in downtown nashville there's like an old school candy shop okay and they make fudge in there and they make like oh. a blonde like a blonde fudge mm -hmm. and go. that's what i'm getting on the nose on this yeah you're like speaking my kind of notes josh i yeah. love that yeah uh, josh i was I like thinking that. of vanilla buttercream icing mm -hmm. i can see that too yeah. yeah so same 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 as you're saying with the blonde yep fudge. absolutely yeah very nice Getting almost like a like a, a toasted <laughs> raspberry note kind of in a way. It's like a, a darker like toasted raspberry kind of a note. Beautiful. It's like neat. a chocolate covered cherry a little on the nose. Mm. Yeah. Like a dark chocolate. So one of the coolest things yeah. to me is when you have multiple people tasting the yeah. like, tasting the same thing and all the different notes you can get out of it and the way that one person's palate reads something differently than another person's palate is so cool. Right. It's like we're all kind of around the same thing, but mm -hmm. we're coming at it from different angles. Yeah, yeah. that's so true. Looks like Bob's sipping some uh, free wrench right now. Nice job, Bob. I love it. Yeah. I will say this smells this good. Is, I'm going to take a sip. And cheers trouble. to you all and cheers oh, to everyone in chat. Cheers. Cheers, yeah. cheers to everyone in chat as well. I'm with you on that one, Josh. Josh is like, let's dive into it. It's <laughs> great. That's incredible. That's really good. Oh, man. That's really good. Isn't it, Marcus? <clears throat> Man. That's Where's amazing. Cousin Anita? Where's Cousin Anita? She needs to try that one, Marcus. I know. I know. If I let her in here, I don't think she would let me have any more of uh, the samples that's left. <laughs> she would have she she finished all of the Free Range bottles. <laughs> you see what she did to this bottle already, which is this Ooh, is uh -oh. Cousin Anita. Looking good. Uh -oh. for a refill over there. <laughs> Absolutely. Indeed. What oh, I like man. is still with the proof and like the bold flavors, you still get like the, the grain flavor in the background and especially yeah. on like it lingers on the palate at the end. It's like super viscous too. It is. Agree. Yeah, it you do so... get that really nice mm. creaminess front of the palate. And on the back, I'm getting some of those baking spices. Man, now that I go back to the mm. nose after taking a sip, I'm picking up a little bit of the barrel char, I think. 
Mm-hmm. Like I, I read that as like this slightly savory note that's mixed in with all the sweetness that I did not get before taking a sip. But now that I'm back to it mm-hmm. on the note, man, it that is very really interesting. Nice. Um, Bean Counter good- wanted to know how widely is Frey Ranch distributed? Sure. So um, right now we're in Nevada, California, Arizona, a little in Georgia and Ohio for distribution. Um, we are available on our website. Um, shop.frayranch.com. And then also I got a shout out um, Keg and Barrel or Keg and Bottle. They are in California and I know they ship and carry all of our products. So, Yeah. And that's who this pick will be distributed through and they ship to awesome. almost every state. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. They're really good about that, which is, which is awesome. You know, to have that uh, kind of flexibility to ship to all the different states. This is a really good blend of sweet and spicy in the palate mm. and the finish. They blend so well together. Right. We're off to a good start. We are. Absolutely. Oh, and that's yeah. the lowest proof. I know. That could be dangerous. Judge I, I, <laughs> Judge, I think that is a perfect assessment. Like the sweet and the spice come together and that yeah. bright, sugary, chocolatey kind of fudgy note I was getting comes through on the palate as well with that kind of spice and grain on the back. And then the finish on that one, man, is it is oily. It yeah. is... <laughs> Yeah. It's it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great call out. Great call out. <clears throat> absolutely. Thanks so All much, right. uh, Rise and Grind. Appreciate that. I absolutely agree. Glad to have uh, Free Ranch on for sure. All right. All right. Ready to get on the nose on B? And this will be yes, barrel 1651, 121 proof. <clears throat> 121.54. Yep. 121.54. Cool. So, guys, we, uh, everyone on the stream should know, and anybody that watches our channel is very familiar, that Erin does not play by the rules. So, not. she has already been through this whole flight and has everything ranked. <laughs> um, oh, I'm, Aaron. Well, hey. no. She works fast. Hold on, pause. I don't have everything ranked yet. Okay. I'm working through the rankings, but I have tasted them all at least twice. Oh, nice. You know, Aaron, you're, you're, you're twice. Wow. You're Aaron, you're right up my alley. <laughs> Trenton always makes fun of me because I'm always prepping the night before for the show, you know, yeah. you, know, you got to get into it. You know, you got to know. Yeah. yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. I, I agree. Just spin up a little bit. Like so me her. and Trenton are way more analytical. Like we want to focus yes. on the nuances and everything. Sure. And Erin is just sure. very gut level. Like she's just yep. going to roll right through it and say, yep. like yep. she'll go back and get stuff. But when sure. you're talking about ranking things, she's like, I just need to fly through it and see what strikes mm-hmm. me as the best. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then we'll yep. figure it out after the fact. Yep. There you go. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, Matthew, definitely for a good cause. The uh, the uh, portion of the uh, proceeds going to charity, which is great. And so, and I want to give a huge shout out mm-hmm. to uh, to SLB Drinks and Stuff and Whiskey, who are such a huge fan of you know from a charity perspective. So, uh, thanks again, uh, Josh. Aaron, as well as Trenton and Kurt for, you know, the whole um, bringing together like the St. Jude aspect of it. I think that is such a, a wonderful call. So kudos to you all. Absolutely. Thank you for that. We just, we just appreciate you kind of inviting us to be a part of this. Yeah. This was a fantastic idea. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate thanks, Judge. It. Indeed. <clears throat> what do wow, you guys get so- on the news? Uh, being that, well, I'm, I'm going to call out Aaron because Aaron has already dived into everything. So, Oh, don't ask me for notes, man. <laughs> Do you know me? You met me? I don't give notes. Um, That's just why I called on you. <laughs> oh, I don't know the pressure. Um, I'm not getting I can't well, tell while, you. While you think about what you're getting, you. I will, I will kind of cover, and this is what we do on our channel. I'll, I'll cover some yeah. ground for okay. her. So it's wild how much this smells like the first glass, but it is Absolutely. so much. It's, it's softer and rounder, but not mm-hmm. when I say softer, that's usually not a good thing in my book. Cause I like a, a punch, but it is more refined. It, t- it smells like than mm-hmm. the first glass, just on the nose. So I have more notes, but it's on the taste. Okay. Where you at? This tastes like a spiked sweet tea to me. Oh, Ooh. spiked tea. Hey now. Hey, right. bottoms up on that on that note. I know. <laughs> like it's very spiked, but it's got this sweet tea undercurrent, which is nice. It makes it high proof, but not super um overpowering, I think. Mm-hmm. I'm That's definitely getting more that. sweetness on this one, um, and more of like a confectionery sugar sweet. 100 percent Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I would call that saturated sweetness. Mm. That is yeah. really good. Kurt, <laughs> um, Trenton, what do you guys think about this one? 
I, so like just comparing this one to the first one, I feel like this one is more of like a straight line with some really nice, like very bold flavors. Whereas the first one, I feel like it was, it was more of a roller coaster. You know, you got that, that peak, uh, bold, <laughs> spicy flavor. And then it, it go, it dips down a little bit to, to kind of meet that flat where this one is. Yeah. But this one is like Josh said, like much more rounded. It is. I, like I would agree. Too. Colby just joined us, so. Hey, guys. Good hey, to see you again. Hey, Colby. Already how are you? Hey, buddy. Long, yeah, long time no see. How you doing? It's good. good, good yeah. Good. Long, been long. Super long. So I've been, uh, we've been farming super hard, and uh, I just got stuck in the big water wagon trying to spray down the roads. And I was trying to get back there, so I had to have somebody come and pull me out so that I could get it. And, like, I was probably two miles away, so I couldn't really walk back without and be on time. So I, anyways, I got out. and Yeah, stuck in the it's mud. It's farmer problems. <laughs> Ed, we, I get I get my zero it. turn stuck in the yard sometimes. I can't imagine it's, getting one of those yeah. big boys stuck in there. Well, this thing is gigantic too, and so then we broke. We had a big sling that's rated for like twenty six thousand pounds or something like that. And we broke oh it. My gosh, had to get something. So like you a big really table. need the whiskey right now. Yeah, let's, let's drink, saying. guys. <laughs> All right, that's all right. I love it. <laughs> well, you Happy really to have you. Thanks again, Kobe, for joining us. We appreciate, it. Yeah. especially you know, obviously you're so busy. So thank you so much for no, your no, no problem. This is totally. We're going from totally. lowest proof to highest proof, and we've done this one, and we're on this one right now. Okay, so you guys started backwards. Well, backwards to, like, my tasty map, but yeah. lowest proof to highest proof, which okay. I like, yeah. Cool. And he has no. my options. Not today. No. Yeah, not today. Those are we've only had one, one bourbon yeah. hazmat ever. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 what was the, the proof on that? Do you remember? Yeah. Like 100, yeah, it's barely 140 point. Six or something like that. Wow. So oh, wow. I mean, it wasn't much over hazmat, but it no. was like right there. Okay. Okay. Well, we had several 138s and 139s, yeah. but they were all like kind of in a slug. I don't know. They must have been in a certain spot in the barrel warehouse or something. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. What's your What's your ideal proof point when you're drinking something? Do you have one? I just honestly, it's whatever. I I used to think like when we do the barrel picks, like the lower mm -hmm. proof ones always seemed like they were a little bit more harsh to me. Mm -hmm. and so the higher sure. proof ones tasted better. And then all of a sudden, like we started tasting some lower proof ones that were phenomenal. And so it totally threw my whole thing all, all over the place. <laughs> so, I mean, I've tasted, uh, we've, we've done barrel picks where we have like a couple hundred and thirty something proofs and a 120 and I like the 120 the best. And then we've had the same thing where I like the 120 the worst, you know what I mean? It's, mm. I'm more, like a, I'm yep. more of like a flavor. Sure. And I, what I really, I like is like the texture when you get that like creamy mouthfeel that like coats the your mouth, the viscosity. Yeah. So if, yeah, I'm a, I'm a sucker for that. No matter what the yeah. proof is. Yeah. Josh is too. First one. Do you guys typically align Colby and Ashley, like in terms of like, like your, your, like your preference, like with like when you're going through the different barrels, like do you typically align or are you on like polar opposites? Um, so I would say not polar opposites, but we don't always align, but that's why I love our barrel program. Um, we yeah. actually, with our master distiller, Russell taste through every barrel and mm -hmm. we're always kicking out ones that are super unique. And that's why when we taste through these today, you're going to find that they're very drastically different. Because hmm. one of us on our team was like, that one is like, someone's going to just fall in love with it. You know, it's, and, it's yeah, either yeah. like, you know, we've had like cherry bombs. We've had yeah, we've creamsicle made, barrels. Um, a lot of times if it's not yeah. our personal favorite, but it's like maybe super spicy. Yeah. Maybe we don't like spicy, but it's, hey, this sure. is some, some people like that. So we'll throw it in there just yeah. to throw a curveball <clears> in <throat> extra, extra dry or extra woody or extra mm -hmm. something, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And we've we've never had one of these um, barrel picks where everybody's in consensus. Like everybody's like, that's the one. Usually okay. it's always everybody fighting over this one or that I one. I mean, or, we, you know. we've had like Rochambeau, um, arm wrestling. So. <laughs> <laughs> a little paper, rock, scissors we'll tournament going down a little later. Yeah. Paper, rock, scissors. scissors. I love it. That's a good one. <laughs> well, Bruzy, this might be your time to get your first uh, free ranch barrel pick. So here we go. This might be it right here, so which is awesome. I don't know. I'm I'm so, still. It's funny, Josh. Like, I still have a lot of love for uh, the first bottle that we uh, tried. I don't know. Yeah, me too, Josh. Torn. I'm on that one too. But yeah. All right. I think we're ready to move on. If everyone else is as well, to uh, barrel number one five nine five. Hundred twenty five nine five six four proof. So I will say, Colby. Now that we've got you both on stream. Thank you guys for what you do. Um, Aaron's dad's a farmer. My grandfather's a farmer. And 
we know how much work goes into that. So, yeah. and then they're not running distilleries too. So <laughs> hats off. I'm not wearing a hat, but hats off to you guys for what you do because it's an incredible amount of work and you guys are really the backbone of the agricultural backbone of our country. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, everything whiskey starts off with grain and that's, I mean, an agriculture product and that's most things that we eat. So it's super important, but um, I had to go and get myself like most farmers, a lot of times have a lot of rest in the winter and they work their butts off in the summer. And then mm -hmm. I had to go and put in a distillery. So now I just <laughs> getting the breaks. <laughs> Sounds like you got that got to be doing something problem that I have. <laughs> I, do. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I will say <laughs> Shim in the chat from Keg and Bottle did ask you guys, how has the rain impacted your crops this season? Oh, oh good yeah. question. Yeah. That's it. That's a great question. So they, they, you know, in the winter here, our crops are mostly dormant. Um, I mean, wheat, rye, and barley um, are grown. We haven't planted corn yet. We don't plant that until May because we don't want to have a late frost on it. Um, mm. And so it didn't necessarily help or hurt the crops. But where it really helped us is um, the snowpack in the mountains because we get all of our water comes from the Sierra Mountains from both sides of Lake Tahoe, and it flows down to a, a reservoir. And sure. so, um, you know, that really impacts our irrigation water. And... Right now, they're preparing for flood conditions, which is like very rare around here. We are in and the so, driest state in the nation, so yeah, like the word flood it doesn't in Nevada happen very it often. Happen. It doesn't even exist. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and we really didn't get a whole lot of moisture in the on the farm. I mean, it was just enough to keep us from getting any farm work done, which was a giant mm -hmm. pain. Because normally we're working the ground, getting fields ready in in December, January, February. We didn't even start until like four or five days ago, which is like super late for us. So. Oh, That's wow. why we're doing 24 hours a day right now, trying to get everything, everything caught up. Got it. That's a great question uh, from Shim. Definitely a great question. Another well, question from. Uh... Oh, go ahead, Aaron. No, it's fine. No, go, go ahead. ahead. I was, I was gonna gonna say, say another I question have... from. Uh... Oop, ladies first. I'm a gentleman. Ladies first. <laughs> I have ranked my flight, and it was a three-way tie for oh. first. Ooh. Oh. I have officially ranked the three, but there are three that could I could easily be swayed into changing them. So just okay. a heads up. Uh, oh, I love oh, it. Wow. All right. Uh, Aaron knows what she wants. I love that. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> what we've always found the easiest to do in these barrel picks is kick out the ones you don't care for is almost easier than picking your favorite. And so like you did, you picked out three, mm -hmm. so that means you don't yep. care for two. So right. that narrows it down for the discussion. It does. No, it I definitely feel like does. This third one just smells thick. It just. It does, doesn't it? Can you see it's what like I mean? Just, yeah. Yeah. It it's does. Just, like you, uh, even like looking at it, it's this beautiful color. It's rich. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you guys catch yeah, me I'm right? I'm in love with this third one. I I you took are? a drink of water, but I had to sniff it first. Oh. Which I'm like, <laughs> oh man, I just like on autopilot over here, like. Yeah. We. I, I sniffed my fair oh, share wow. of glasses of water and then looked around to see if anybody caught me or not. <laughs> We, we, do, we do bourbon blinds a ton. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I said you can't get away with it for streaming. Yeah. You can't. No, <laughs> this is the, uh, I think I'm with, uh, I'm with Kurt on this one. I thought I loved number one. Oh, am I, I right? Like I'm Marcus? cheating on my wife right now. Yeah. This is, I'm in love right now. <laughs> I'm in love. Which, one, which one is that? <laughs> this is a uh, barrel 1595. Yeah. Oh, number three is just, this is yeah. ridiculous. It's so well, good. On the I nose, find a charger for my computer. Uh -oh. On the nose, it to me it hit me right up front before I took a sip with like this dusty corn, like that that dry wood smell that you get when you're in a rick house. Yes, and then a butterscotch note, and then on the yeah. palate, I got all that except it flip flopped. It went mm -hmm. butterscotch yeah. first, dry rick house, and just a touch of dusty corn on the back end, and it is thick like it it's just delightful it is so and viscous it, that and what's and that, interesting about it to, and it's, i think josh honest you were spot on in your analysis from the nose to the palate what's interesting is that i didn't get like that raspberry note which i did actually in number one and number two in the first two bottles uh that we tried but i didn't get it in this one you're right but i love that woody butterscotch kind of a note you were spot on about that oh, guys man. i don't know what you all thought but on the first couple 
the the grain and the barley note was fairly strong, which I that's one thing I absolutely enjoy with Frey Ranch because they let their grains shine in their whiskey. Yeah. This one I feel is a little bit more subdued, mm -hmm. but still there supporting the flavor profile. But the sweetness in here is dynamite. Yep. Agreed. <clears throat> totally it's weird agreed. because when I first poured it, I had rich molasses like a prune plum thing and then i let it sit for two minutes and it wasn't even remotely close to that ah, i put caramel butterscotch barley so and it good. transfers really nicely to the, to the yeah. palate from the nose absolutely love that one it so does far. and there is a savory note on the second one and this one mm -hmm. and i'm assuming it's just barrel char and it's the way that the grains and and you guys mash mm -hmm. bill interacts with the barrel but it is something that I get hints of in other pours, but nothing mm -hmm. quite like this. And it is super mm -hmm. intriguing to me. It is. Mm -hmm. And it shows the, uh, the depth, I think of this barrel versus the first two, even, even better than uh, the first one, 18 and 17. This one to me is way more well-rounded across the board. Like it checks in my opinion, every single box from the nose palette to the finish across the board. Well, we'll check this out, judge, go back and smell, smell the third one here. Okay. I'm going to go back and smell the first one. They smell very yeah, similar, but they do. Mm -hmm. the third one smells dark and rich, mm -hmm. whereas the first one smells yeah. way more bright and sugary. Yep. Yes. Trenton even mentioned to me that even on the nose, it smells thick, Josh. Yeah, it's it's you almost know, like the difference that's... between a bright and a dark candy. Yeah, and that's the, I, I found a lot of similarities between one and three on the nose as well, but I think Trenton hit it on the head. It's just more concentrate in number three. I didn't think anybody would agree with Way me. Way more concentrate in number three. <laughs> well, I did. Thanks. I'm there for you, buddy. Wow. Oh, man. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> that's that's really oh, nice. This this All might right. not be, and we, we have, we've never done like a collaborative pick before, so this might not be a route that everybody wants to go, but if you, like, would you guys feel comfortable choosing one that's your least favorite out of the three so far? Yes. Yeah. But, but I don't want to tell you because I don't want to swear. Oh, Aaron's got to go first. She <laughs> said, yeah, first Aaron, oh, uh, I don't want to tell you. I'm, tell I'm actually scared of Aaron. I never was scared of Aaron before, but now I'm really scared of Aaron. She's like her own little like matrix, hey, you know. She's Marcus, I live yeah, in fear every day, day, brother. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I don't want to oh, tell yeah. you because I think you guys will all think I'm wrong. Mm. But. Well, should, are we doing this? Are we doing this? Yeah, sure. I feel like you should. Yeah, I can. I, I, go like first. I can. I know I can easily. Okay, I'm glass old. I don't mind looking like a fool. So it doesn't matter the, to me. The first one is my least favorite. Oh, really? Out okay. of all of them, I've tasted them all. Really? I bring them all. Yeah. All right. The first one is pleasant. Yeah. I'm going yeah. number three. So it's my it's my favorite by far. My favorite is number. Oh no, three. Aaron, Aaron was saying her least favorite. Least favorite. Oh, least favorite. I just remember, I just two. tasted. I just tasted three, two, one. And I get the most grain and sharpness on the first glass. Two and three seem much more well-rounded. And I actually, and this is odd for anybody that watches our channel often, we don't typically agree. I would agree that the first glass is my least favorite. Mm -hmm. And I do think three is my most favorite so far. Yep. Well, I, think two is and I, I think Trent and I are in unison. We don't, two is our least favorite of the group that we have in front of us. But okay. three... I, I'm speaking for you, so inter he interrupts We're me. not in the same boat. Oh, oh okay. Well, then we're oh, not. So, so for me, then I'll just speak for myself. For me, <laughs> two is my least favorite. Three is my favorite so far. Yeah. I'm right That's there with you on that one. Kurt, I may I ask, and are, Marcus, may sure I ask. If, so I did say that I think one is my least favorite just because sure. I'm getting the most grain and it's a little bright and sharp compared okay. to the well-roundedness of the second two or the second okay. and third one. What is it about glass two that is your least favorite? Like what's putting well, it in that position for you? I feel in glass two that the, I'll have to go back to it here in just one second, but I feel that those grain notes is, is, is strong in there. And it kind of, it, it, it just takes away from the balance of the whole sip for me personally. Now, as you all know, we're picking, I'm sure from five fabulous samples here. So we're, you know, we're splitting hairs here. Right. Sure you are. You're, you're, so you're absolutely spot so on. So that's there. that's where I'm coming from. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, you're you're spot on, and I agree. I you know I echo everything that Kurt said. I'm 100 100 in agreement. 
with him for sure. Am I am I the only person that has the first pour in the, at number one? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, you are. And Josh, yeah. Josh, and Aaron. This is what we do in all of our shows. Uh, well, yeah, know, I mean, I know. I watch the best channel. Yeah. Yeah, you too. I, yeah. I, you know, it is what it is, and that's the beauty of whiskey. Am I right? Yeah, that's the beauty. You know, I would love to know, but for, uh, Ashley and uh, and uh, Colby, what are your favorites so far? Just from the first three. My from favorite is three. because I'm a sucker for like that that viscosity and like the mouth feel and the creamy texture. It'd be three. Just because that's that's my personal preference, and I'm not a lot of people like different barrels than I do, but that's just that's me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. What about you, Ash? Um, I also really like the third one. She she nudged me when we were tasting them, and she's mm -hmm. like, "Cherry." <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Gotta love that. All right. Well, I think well, at least we're all in agreement so far. Like Sorry, buddy. <laughs> See, but we've never, like I said, we've never had one of these where everybody's like, that's it. You know, everybody's got a yeah. different preference. And it, I have been on several picks where it is unanimous and it's awesome when that's the case, but sure. it, it rarely is. And mm -hmm. I will say, I do know that Trenton is a rye guy, Aaron is a rye girl. Mm -hmm. I am surprised. Like, you but guys, but I don't are, like one and he likes but, one. Yeah, you guys are, are differing in this sense. I thought you guys' palettes would align yeah. actually pretty closely. More, yeah. And uh, you guys are off. That's a good point. For Josh. me, good one good has point. one has a little bit more of like a really nice, I almost get like a cherry syrup kind of note in mm -hmm. there. And I feel like with not that I think three and one are really, really solid. For me, the only difference is that the, at the end of three, you get like a little bit of the spice, whereas one, it just kind of carries that sweetness all the way through. And I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for for sweets just in general. So this is way up my alley. I but hear they're, you. they're both really solid. There they you are. are. I think the, the ability to communicate why you like it is so mm -hmm. key, and that is so spot on. And I think I'm, I'm you're married to the wrong woman. Then. No, but I'm 100 percent with Colby <laughs> because on the fin on the finish, I have notes on the finish for glass three. I just wrote. Thick. <laughs> it is. So, so it's far, thick yeah. and savory, though. It's it. thick and savory on number three. Yeah. Yes. yes. Number All one right. was very uh, soft and like, it was just very soft and approachable, which is probably yes. really good for the masses. But number three was just special. It was special, yeah. in my opinion. I'm with you. It really was. Yeah. I do think three is All special. Right. Number four. All right. Let's get into the notes. All right, let's go. Sorry, I did my channel. I'm like, let's get into this. I know. Come on, no, dude. Okay. Sorry. Why not? Sure my twin weeks. brother, remember, right? We're, we're twins. Exactly. Yeah, for those who didn't know, me and Marcus, we are twins. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, man, this is nice. Oh, yeah, it is. I'm spelling more than you are today. It's rough. Okay, Have you so guys noticed that, that some of these just, or most all of them so far for me, really aren't drinking up to that 125 proof level? Nope. Yeah, not they're drinking all. below the proof. They are. I'm yeah. not a unlike Trenton. That's where we differ. I'm not a huge proof hound. Mm -hmm. I enjoy more of the 100 to 110 proof. You know, oh, maybe okay. 115. But these here are just they're drinking a little bit below the proof too, which I'm really enjoying. Yeah, yep. I will say that I do tend to like high proof because I like mm -hmm. concentration of flavor, mm -hmm. and I feel like mm -hmm. there are a lot of things that sit on shelves that can't achieve the concentration of flavor mm -hmm. that some of the truly special products can. Sure. I will say in this tasting right here, glass one was the most bright for me so far, but glass two and three both had that concentration of flavor that I tend to demarcate as something that is hitting a special zone mm -hmm. that not a lot of products can touch that. Mm -hmm. So for better, for worse, for indifferent, whatever. I mean, I think that to me, that is what's standing out right now. There's a concentration of flavor here. I mean, again, hats off to you guys. This is fantastic. Yeah, oh, really, really great stuff. I'm getting I on think every um, single. Oh, sorry. Number, oh, number four. I'm getting some like carnation or something floral. Yeah. On the nose. I don't know why. Every time she says carnation, I think what in carnation? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what. What is that? It's a flower. So Josh and Colby, uh, oh, a very it? interesting question regarding like age statement stated uh, bottles. 
if you will, for like for single barrels, if you will, like no matter who the partner is, is it, if it's Total Wine or any other like sto store and so forth. But what do you guys think regarding like like just like the age dated barrels and so forth? You know, I don't know if we'll ever put it on the label, but we could maybe put it on the sticker. Most of our barrels are all like five and a half to six and a half years old. Um, sometimes they're less, but uh, we've really found that we've held barrels back. And it yeah. masks a lot of the grain flavor the longer you leave it in the barrel. You're getting a lot more oak and a lot less grain. And our, our goal from the beginning was to like showcase the grains that we're growing here on the farm. And so by by really masking them for a long period of time, it, it just doesn't taste the same to me. So we have right now we have some eight-year-old barrels. They're okay. fantastic if you like really oaky, woody, you know, flavor, but it doesn't have a lot of that grain flavor that that I really like. And there's a saying in the wine industry that you got to like what you make because you might end up drinking it all, all yourself. And I love the whiskey. So I like the five and a half better than the six and a half. And like, oh, yeah. I love it right there. We actually, did, yeah, we, we've done several picks where people will kick out the older barrels right away and they're trying to decide between the two youngest barrels, you know, quite a few times. And these are big yeah. whiskey judge people that, you know. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we like to bottle and you know, pour our whiskeys and serve them when they're ready. So we don't put Absolutely. anything in a bottle that's not something that we're proud of, you know, yep. regardless of the age. So whether it's like four and a half or five and a half or six, um, sure. we, you know, it's, it's less about the age statement and more about how it tastes. Yeah, absolutely. Us. I completely agree with you. And I think, you know, one misconception in the whiskey business as a whole is that age determines the quality of the whiskey. And, that, and that's definitely a misconception because to your point, you know, you might find a six-year-old that's better than a seven-year-old. So it's not always that the age has to determine the quality of the yeah. whiskey. So great point, uh, Ashley and Colby. Thank you yeah. for that. There's, there's definitely a point where, you know, it's it's going up and then it, it just kind of starts to plateau. You know, and for us, it's mm -hmm. like catching it when it's like right at that peak. And one of the requirements for bourbon is, is it has to be put in a new barrel. And so new sure. barrels impart a lot of flavor. And so that's why like scotches, when they get to be 20 or 25 years, a lot of times they're putting used bourbon barrels, used sherry, you know, all, all kinds of different used barrels. So they're not right. getting a, a massive amount of oak flavor right off the bat. So they can age a lot longer and not get overpowered by the oak. So Absolutely. true. Great points. Yeah. Really great points. So Josh, what do you think with, uh, I guess, barrel number 1543, 126.20 proof? What are you thinking, Josh? I haven't gotten it on the palate yet. Well, I think it, it has drink the, that I think sucker, it has hang on, I think it has the <laughs> most interesting nose what? of the bunch. Yo, mine's gone. It doesn't smell <laughs> as as deep and rich as two and three to me, but mm -hmm. it is boy, it is dynamic. And it is there's like I'm almost getting I think Ashley, you said a little bit of florality. There's a little bit of mintiness in here that I'm picking up on. I would agree. But there's yeah. also some classic bourbon notes in here that are kind of tying it all together. This is the type. Okay. So at the end of the day, right, what we like to do is sit down, turn on a show and just hang out to kind yeah. of decompress before the end of the day, going to bed and everything. And I like to pour something that I can smell mm -hmm. twice or three times as much <clears throat> as I actually drink it. That's like just that. what I like personally. Yeah. And this is the most fun nose. It's very playful. I would call it playful. It mm -hmm. Okay. I like that, Josh. It's really good. I jumped ahead to five. Oh, Thank wow. <laughs> I, Kobe's I, like, uh, box check. Let's move I'm, on. I'm, I'm interested to see what you smell on five or, or your nose on five because um, – I get like, okay, I get hot tamales or like cinnamon toast crunch. I can't decide between the two. I know they're totally different. But I'm getting... <laughs> anyway, you're just excited. Whoa. Trenton's excited now. Whoa, glass now five is toast an crunch. outlier. This has got to be the other barrel. Like you're, like you're, <laughs> is that an Amarana finish? Yeah. 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 Hazelnut. That's what I thought. Glass like, like hazelnut. Cinnamon or like. Um, I mean, cinnamon, yeah, but like, like more on the hazelnut side. Like hot tamale, like, but, and I know that doesn't yeah. taste like cinnamon toast crunch either, but it's like the sweetness of cinnamon toast crunch with like a little bit of hotness of a hot tamale. Yeah. Yeah. Like you mean the candy Five. hot tamale? Yeah. 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 Oh, the candy oh, hot tamale. Okay. You're my favorite. <laughs> that. Yeah. All right. I don't so think I've not... met anybody else who's actually, who, who has described a bourbon with like a candy note on it. Everything. I, okay. Oh. So. If, oh, we do. We say red hots all the time. If you're tasting yeah. red uh, hot, you do, whiskey yeah. with us all the time, like 95% of everything's candy. Like, oh, that's Rolos because it's, you know, it's got like a chocolate <laughs> caramel. Like, caramel. It's like, no, that's Rolos. It's not, you know, or 
we'll be tasting through mm-hmm. and it's like always always some candy yeah. I will say glass five was one of the three that I had to pick between for my first place. Oh, okay. Are we all four? Four? This is very, so, very one of the three. We're, we're doing a serious disservice to oh, the work wow. that Ashley and Colby have put into glass four, but I will I say, know, Trent, I feel bad, right, Josh? I'm right there with you. I feel Colby, bad. Colby, Colby I know. Himself. Himself. I know. Colby, yeah, Colby did do this to himself. He but did. when Colby I did. smell glass, <laughs> when I smell glass five, the very first thing within a split second. In my mind, Amberana. So I'm with you, Trenton. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I'm with you on that one, too. Yep. Smells that? like an Amberana finished bourbon. That is wild that that is not an Amberana finished bourbon. What is that? It's like a Brazilian, Brazilian wood. wood. No, yeah. I don't, oh, it, yeah. it makes I don't it think like Brazilian the wood, but I cigar. Do think uh-huh. this is Amberana. completely different than one through four. I don't know if I, I think number five has the Amberana kind of a nose to it, if you will. But you can definitely tell, I would assume, that glass number five bottle or barrel number 1462 is from the other Cooperage. It has to be. Do you guys want to know the, the, the truth? <laughs> I don't know. Are you, know. you ready I don't for know. the truth? Well, it's gotta be it's, can we handle the truth? It's, it's, yeah, <laughs> I feel like it's gotta be. I feel like it's gotta be three. Three. Oh, interesting. I don't know. You tell me when you're ready for me yeah. to tell you. Yeah, hold, uh, hold are, that information. Are we on four? Don't, don't influence us until we there are I like that. Further. Yeah, we don't, we don't need to be influenced. I'm so glad these don't have the ages listed on them. I'm very thankful too. for that. Yep. I am too. I really am. So, Trenton and Kurt, what are your thoughts mm-hmm. on number four? Just like across the board. Uh, number four, <clears throat> pardon me. Number four for me, I thought was very rich on the nose. Uh, on the palate as well. Uh, it's it's bold for me, but it lends a little bit more earthiness to the sip than uh-huh. a couple of the other ones. Okay. Uh, I sure like does. it. That's what Aaron yeah, likes. I like it. I like that. Yeah. I like some earthiness now and then. Um, but in retrospect of what we've been tasting, I wouldn't put it above number three. <clears throat> mm. But that's kind of where I stand with number four. I enjoyed okay. that sip very, very much, but I found it to be bold, rich, bold in flavor, but a little bit more earthy. True. I would agree. Number four reminds me of a lot of my my Frey Ranch single barrel that I have from um, from Total Wine. And while I love it, just for this pick, I want something slightly different. So I do think, and I agree with you. I think, I think, uh, Kurt, you hit the nail on the head. It's definitely very earthy as a whole, and I, and I actually, mm-hmm. that's probably actually one of my favorite notes for, uh, as a whole mm-hmm. from a whiskey standpoint. Yes. But I'm gonna, I probably will move that one aside only because I feel it's very similar to this pick here. That's the only reason. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would love to yep. hear what Aaron has to say about number four. Yeah. Oh, it's do. one of my top three. Mm-hmm. Good. Because of that earthy. Uh-oh. Because it's good. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I have on the nose. I have that it's playful and light, and on the palate, it goes dark. It goes mm-hmm. grain, powdered sugar, and earth. Mm-hmm. And then the finish, mm-hmm. it's it. I'll just. I mean, I'm not trying to hold my cards too close to my vest here. Um, I don't think it beats three for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me either, Josh. Oh. Me either. I, I'm with you, oh. on, Josh. We can have some fighting words later. I'm gonna yeah. I agree. With you, Josh. <laughs> I, will, I, I usually I'll carry Aaron out of here if we have to. <laughs> I usually have some weird notes. I have no, I have earthy. No. Yeah. It to what me have, it's have, I don't want this to sound bad, but it's it's a little bit like a mustiness to me, which which I do like um in, in some bourbons. I think in this in this case it's it's a it's a good note. I also have like a roasted pumpkin or a sunflower seed kind of thing. Okay. Or maybe that's the, I see that. that's the, I didn't the get earthiness that, I, that I get. Okay. A little bit different. I don't think I've ever said said that note in my life, but yeah, I actually think this is the one of the things that I actually polished off. It's okay. nice, a little, yeah, like sample. almost a little tobacco. Like it kind of reminds me of Jim Beam a little bit on the nose, like that mm-hmm. earthiness, tobaccoy aspect. Mm-hmm. Yep, but it doesn't transfer to the palate at all. True. You're Trent. You're talking about sample four. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna go ahead and say Aaron pulls out some wild tasting notes. Roasted pumpkin seed is the best note for this glass. One hundred percent. You absolutely it, nailed it. The fact that you said that actually makes me like it even more. 
and it's already one of my top three. Aaron's going to walk least. out if we don't pick four. We're probably not going no, to, but it's not. he's going to walk out if we don't. Well, it's not my favorite. It's not my first, but it's oh, one of my top three. That's not but that's again, my about. top three, can, I can, I can, I'd gladly, I'd, mm, my top three are very good, so I'd be happy with any one of them. Number four, in my opinion, is by far the most bold. It's one that it definitely puts some hair on your chest, literally. Mm -hmm. And I like it. added the second you know? one to what I got already. I agree. Yeah. All right. All right. Shall we get into glass five, gentlemen? Let's do it. Let's, no, let's move to uh, Kobeville. I like it. It's a good stuff. <laughs> oh, thank so you. So we, we were talking with, with Kobe uh, yesterday, actually. And he was right. saying that he, he, was, he was not – originally a huge fan of 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 doing finished products and then he made a you guys made wine right once and you put it did you put it in there and you what was the consensus on that yeah it's still sitting in a wine barrel um i it's not i don't know what the word uh, it's not my favorite but it's like some people like it like you know what i mean yeah i definitely um, think you know in the spirit of um like innovation and experimentation it's something that we're curious about so we put a couple you know but build a couple whiskey or wine barrels with whiskey and it's something it was, that we might release as single barrels or blend it you know as like mm -hmm. a i don't know a tasting room or a limited oh, release we made some wine a while back and then we dumped the barrels and um i had these barrels and it was like my last chance we had only a couple barrels to fill up the barrels from like barrels that i made wine into you know what i mean and so it's like yeah. it was like something that i couldn't go back in time and do unless i made wine again which um, I'm, I got plenty know. of alcohol here, so you I don't, don't need to make one. Like, yeah, right? exactly. So, don't know. And then also, like our, like I said earlier, our goal was to is to really showcase the grains. And I really feel like there's nothing wrong with secondary aging. A lot of there's a lot of really good whiskeys, but for us, yeah. it almost masks the flavors of the grains that we're trying to showcase that we grow here on the farm. So by by putting it in a secondary barrel, always seems like it defeats the purpose of our kind of our goal and why we do what we do. Yeah, I, gotcha. I, I, I respect that. I, I, do. I do. I gotta say, there's no way you can't respect that because there's so many people that are high, trying to hide the grains, yeah. and the fact that you guys are like, no, we're mm -hmm. literally this stuff has not left our property until Correct. it goes into the bottle. That is incredible, and yeah. the fact that you're propping up the grains, and there is grainy whiskey that is bad, and I like that you guys are challenging the connotation that it has yes. to be bad. Because none of these yeah. are bad. No, none of these. So are none of these again, at all. This is the third you time I've taken my non-existing hat off for you guys. Oh, yeah. thank you. And I'm no, actually glad that you didn't do that too, because I do. You're right, Josh. I mean, a lot of times if you have like the finish, it, like it, it does, it hides it. Rather than hiding it, you want to highlight it, right? And I think your products definitely highlight your grains. To uh, to Josh's point, and I mean, you're spot on. And that's it. I mean, if you don't want to taste the grains in whiskey, why not just put vodka in a barrel and it'd be woody flavored alcohol? You know what I mean? It's like you need those grains to help balance out all the flavors. It's a balance of of wood and grain and, and you know, different flavors that they, we're tasting right now. Indeed. Indeed. Bourbon engineer, I don't know if we can go with number three just yet. We haven't even sipped number five. So we have to hold just for one second, bourbon engineer. One more. Bourbon, bourbon engineer. Hang, hang tight. I just did sip number five, and it is wild. I will say, Shem asked Erin, what was her number one least favorite during your pre-taste as well as tonight? Ooh. So what's your least favorite? Number one. Number one. Oh, oh really? wow. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Aaron, just a oh dart God. right in Trenton's story. I know. I'm Trenton, so I'm sorry. sorry. Trenton, I apologize. I'm, for her. I'm that... sorry I brought her to this. No, I'll, no, no. I'll forgive you this time, but, Hold you know. On. That yes. being said, it's my least favorite out of this group, but okay. I would still drink it if you gave it to me. Like, oh, it's yeah. not bad. Sure. That's <laughs> but I'm, you're you're asking to split hairs here. If I have to pick yeah. a favorite, it's not number one. Okay. But it's also very good. So it is. It's a, it's a it's an okay problem to have. Mm -hmm. Indeed, yes, it, is. it is. It is. So what's different about number five, Josh, to you compared to one through four? What's different in number five? So when you create content on YouTube, you often relay tasting notes and they remind what you're saying is like, oh, I'm getting this thing, right? Like I'm getting mm -hmm. cinnamon red hots. Yeah. What you're saying, it doesn't taste exactly like that. It's just reminding you of that. Correct. And that is what glass five is for me. It's re reminding me of cinnamon red hots. 
It is reminding me as like there's a saturation to the flavor that is really nice. And I got to give it to glass five, but I don't, mm. I, I think in this flight of five pours, I would rank it my third. I would put it firmly in the middle. It is the outlier. And I would be surprised if it is not the barrel from the other cooperage, but having tasted barrels that have lived side by side for their entire life with the same mash bill, the same age, literally everything and seeing how different they can vary, it, you know, that's just a total, that's guess, a total yeah. guess, but it, it to me, it is the outlier in this, in this group of five pours. Okay. Trenton and uh, Kurt, what do you guys think about glass number five or bottle five? I have, <laughs> I have done like a, a less sweet version, a little bit more bitter version of like Apple Jacks. Yeah. It's not as like more like a concentrated. I'm glad Josh said something cinnamon because at least I can get it, at least I can get something in there. But it's almost like a soft apple kind of note. It's not, it doesn't it doesn't carry too much through the through the palate for me. It's like kind of at the forefront and then it kind of just slowly fades away into that green mm -hmm. note, which I like. Yep. But <clears throat> what do you got? Well, you know what, guys, for me, I'm a little different. I don't know if you all know that or not, but I am. <laughs> but when I first sip a whiskey, when I first open it, I, I'm more in generalities when I'm speaking of it. It takes me a couple of days and a, and a couple times to go back to it to get more specific notes. But for me personally, uh, the fifth option was relatively bitter for me. Uh, it does have a lot of the, it does have some, some nice notes to it, some earthiness there that I really like, but it seems to be a bit bitter for me. So that would be last on my list personally. Yeah. Really? For me personally, I, I wish I wish that that Amberana <laughs> cinnamon toast crunchiness kind of transferred the palate a little bit more. I'm surprised that it didn't. In all yeah, honesty. It, the nose did not transfer the palate to me much at all. Mm -hmm. now, so you know what's unique? It's funny. Um, I never realized until today until how much I truly agree. Number one with Kurt. So it's it's definitely yeah, that is crazy, Judge, isn't it? How we it we is kinda, it we is kinda, yeah. I mean, we crazy. really do a lot. I mean. I think this is the, the number one that – number one, I agree with uh, Josh. I do think it's the one from the other Cooperage. That would be my guess. I do think it's very bitter, and it has like almost like a licorice note in a way. It's unique, and it's different. For me, and I, I'm you – know, you guys know me. If you ever watch my channel, I just I, – I don't hold anything back. I'm in love with number three. I really am. I love – and I mean I love deeply number three. Damn it. Big time. <laughs> number five is good. It's okay. But number three is just like that is a special barrel. Like it's a barrel I, I would almost even buy almost the entire barrel All myself. Right. That is All right. Ju a good judge. Okay, let's let's just check you and me real quick here because I already okay. ranked mine. All right. All right. So okay. if yours and I rank the same, okay, this is going to be <clears throat> awfully strange because it's the first time that we've been in any kind of a situation like this, right? Okay. Hit me. But for me, for me, number one is number is three. Number Absolutely. one is number three. Okay. Now I put I put as my number two would be four because I really enjoyed that earthy note to it. I put number one as three and number number four was two and number five was five. That was my list. We are very, very close. Three and five were agreement, but I have three, one, two, four, five. Yeah, I kind of figured you would have one as number yeah. two. Yeah. I, I just lean a little. I, I really do like that earthy note quite a yeah. bit. Yeah, but not good enough to, to knock off number three for sure. I yeah, of so, course, of course. R real quick, real quick. Um, I want to talk. Like, let's talk to chat for a second. So, I think mm -hmm. number five, while wildly interesting and quite good for what it is, it could be a polarizing bottle. Like, if people bought that bottle there will be some people that don't like what they're getting. Yeah. It's so fun. And that's unfortunate. Different. But, yeah. You know, at, at the consumer level, you have to think about the consumer when you're doing barrel picks. And that is one that is just, some people are going to love it. Some people are going to hate this it. This is how we did our last barrel pick. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and then we pick the people's bourbon. And one isn't too far off of that. Although way more to center line, but like two, three and four, this is wild that we did it in proof order because I think two, three, and four are the most palatable. Like they're, they're all palatable. They're all actually, I love all of them yeah. in different ways, yep. but different ways. two, three, and four are, I think 
they will make the most people happy. And it's just a matter of out of those three, are, are we kind of on the same page? Like out of those three middle ones, which one fits the profile the best for the people? Absolutely. Yep. Agreed. Two, two three, and four is what, yep. we're, what we're figuring out. And in my mind. Y'all, I'm going to have to have a come to Jesus session because three is <laughs> not one of my top three. It is not one of her top three. And I can't really. really. Oh I can't it is not. I but, can't believe it's right. not. But let me right. have a moment. Y'all. Yes. Okay. Talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to do some tasting. So Blake, yeah. I know Blake asked about uh, how can you get a bottle? So Blake, this is number one. This is definitely going to sell out very quickly. I mean, um, so definitely be, a, uh, 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 of course, a patron, of course, either SLB, stuff and whiskey or myself. Um, I can't imagine this is going to go. This is going to go very quick. I mean, obviously, Free Ranch is highly regarded in the whiskey market. So definitely become a patron of SLB number one and uh, stuff and whiskey number two and myself number three. Um, these bottles are going to go very, very quick. So, very quick. Indeed. So, do you guys want to know yeah. which one? I'm just yeah. going to say the same thing. Yes. 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 So, like hey, number one is the other Cooperage. I can, oh. see, I can see that. I can see that. Oh. Yep. Interesting. And, and ironically, oh, this, like this number one is not representative of the other barrels that we've had from the same uh -huh. cooperage. Like they're a little bit different tasting than this one. Like I would have actually probably not guessed that this one was wow. the other cooperage either. Mm -hmm. What do you it, guys think of one? Yeah, good question. So um, while we're tasting through all the barrels, um, the other cooperage um, that we just got the one truckload of, it tends to be a little more earthy, woodsy, dry on a the palate. A little bit drier and yeah. like, like almost um, maybe a little bit more bitter also. Yeah. But so, this one doesn't taste that, no. that way. Um, and then our other cooperage is much more like number two, three, and four, where you're going to get some of those really nice sweet notes, the rich viscosity. But number five, that one is like... That's the same cooperage as the other ones. Yeah. And it's a total outlier. And it's really close number in five age. five is like crazy. And I mean, like, yeah. possibly even the same tank got filled from the barrel. You know totally, what I mean? Like, yeah. Like, I would guess that 15, or for me, it's number four and number three. 1543 and 1595 were even the same batch. Oh, wow. Can you can you disclose the cooperage of, of the first uh pick yeah of course and um, black black water black water and then the other okay. ones are all barrel 53 and then we also use okay. isc so okay now is that something that you you look to change like quite often just for a variety kind of like change it up a little bit or are you do you typically so, stick with, stick with mean, the same cooperage we stick with the same, same cooperage yeah. but we just got yeah. one truckload from west I mean, uh, um, Blackwater, Blackwater, just to see see what yeah. they taste like, and just to throw it out there. If it was something different or unique or amazing, then then we'd start phasing them in. And we like them; they're they're great yeah. barrels, and everything's great about it. But we just like the barrel fifty three and ISC a little yeah, better. Yeah, and I think that you know nobody's aged whiskey in Nevada as long as we have, so we've got to yeah. try everything. You know, we've got to continue to learn and test and learn and innovate and experiment. And you know, it's great to have these in the mix and it kind of allows you to pull out different flavor profiles instead of just continuing to taste the same thing. So I actually have a question. I'm okay. going to raise my hand. You have a question and then I have a statement yeah. after your question. So uh -oh. you guys said five and a half to six and a half is kind of where you age your barrels. Mm -hmm. Is there a, are you putting stuff in barrels continuously or are there seasons that you guys put stuff in barrels? Like, cause what I know from picking barrels myself the like I've picked seven year barrels, seven and a half year barrels that have had eight summers in the wood versus seven summers in the wood. So that's why I'm asking that question. Yeah, that's a oh, that's a good question. A so good we're question. continually good filling question. throughout the year. Our first year or possibly two, which I think we're past now, we distilled in the winter months and mm -hmm. then farmed all summer. We shut the distillery down and then we started running the distillery year round. Um, every year we increased our production a little bit and um, to got, got to the point where we now we have a dedicated farm crew and a dedicated distilling crew where we at first we were kind of doing both. But, uh, yeah, we're filling up continuously now. Um, we run 362 days a year. We're distilling. Wow. <laughs> so if something is bottled in the fall or barreled in the fall and pulled at five and a half years, it may have only gone through five summers versus yeah. Something that is barreled in the spring 
that is five and a half years old that's actually gone through six summers. Yeah, that's and interesting. It could, yeah, it could. But I mean, so the whole idea is like going through the seasons, is the expansion during the hot summers and the contraction during the cold winters. And so that's why I think each are kind of equally important because the summers push it into the wood layer. The the winters kind of pull it out, pull it out, and you're getting that mm -hmm. like extracted oak flavor by doing that. So an extra mm -hmm. summer might push it into the wood, but then we pull it out, and the whiskey's still sitting in the wood. So it might not really make that big of a difference in in you know, that extra half a year being a winter or a summer. Cause I really think it's important to have both, you know, for that expansion mm -hmm. and contraction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if no, that's a good point. Bung up in the summer, it just shoots off. It pops out, you know, because there's all that pressure inside the barrel. If we take yeah. one off in the winter, it's got this like vacuum where it's like, you know, it has a suction yeah. that's sucking air into the barrel cause it's contracting. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to see it at first hand because there is a big difference in, in how, how the barrel reacts. So true. So Love true. it. Love it. Okay, so I have a, a request real quick of right, everyone right, it is Aaron. here on the stream. Can you taste glass number three and tell me if you do or do not get a very drying note at the end? Drying note, okay. And I would like to that. make a request. I would like to make... Hold on, let them finish my request and then you can ask your request. Well, no, it's ties in. <laughs> oh, okay. So okay, cool. While you're tasting three, taste two as well. Go back, revisit two in comparison to glass three. Oh, two. Okay. While we're doing that, Zach, um, so depending on which barrel we pick, we'll, you know, obviously determine the number of bottles. So kind of TBD for now, but we will definitely let you know. Hmm. I think two, from two opened up quite a bit more. Yes, it did. <laughs> Y'all, I'm telling wow. you. Okay, can I tell you? Two, two is my number one. I I'm feel like this one. was a ploy from Aaron Who's to kind of nudge us in the direction of the <laughs> No, I'm just gonna say two is my number one. It and is. I but but that being said, I had two as my number one, four as my number two. So I could be convinced to swip swap either of them. But I did not like three. Here's the thing. You didn't sorry. Agree. I like can't believe it. First sorry. off, can we I'm all sorry. agree that Aaron's crazy oh, and no. that she did not like her? I'm so sorry. Like, it was my second like, Nothing wrong with that. I'm so sorry, y'all. I'd be interested to know, like, what, what don't you like about three compared to two? I think it was yeah, very... Since we're tasting them both right now. It was yeah. very drying, and okay. I don't like that, personally. Like, I, I like things that don't dry out my tongue. I don't know. I don't know how. What else to say? That's it. that's it. I feel like I'm watching the Kentucky Derby, and I feel like Glass <laughs> Two is that one that is making the pull from behind, <laughs> and that might be crossing the finish line. At least for me, I cannot speak to anyone else. Aaron had Glass Two at the front pretty early on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm stunned at Glass Two. Going back to it, wow. I would love to hear what Ashley and Colby here. think yeah, about this. I think one. Glass Three has such an amazing nose and front of the palate, which, it like, does. I think we're all really excited about. But I do think Glass Four is that Glass Four now is having a comeback as well. Oh, mm. bring four to the thing, not just two. So four is my number two. I, if we're gonna get into rankings, my Glass Two is my number one. Glass Four is my number two. Glass five, which is, we've already eliminated, was my number three. So in the chat, Shim says, in my experience with Frey, the bottle counts range between 180 and 220 bottles per barrel, but the angels can take their share. So we'll see how this thing turns out. Yeah, That's true. Russ L. says, how about picking more than one barrel? <laughs> well, I like that, Russ. That, that I wish. happens a lot. Yeah, that yeah. happens a lot. That does happen, yeah. I don't know, Aaron. I'm... I'm... I'm That's torn. a question for Colby and Ashley if we can get more than one because we, we might be torn here. It's uh, I how often that question gets yeah. asked. Like every every time we do a barrel. So pick, if but... we gave an extra to you, we would have to take away from somebody. And we oh, just... we don't want that. Yeah, yeah we don't want that. Yeah, yeah, so we, we definitely we want to take away from anyone else. That. I mean, that's not that's not a good thing to take away from anyone yeah, else. Yeah, I know we can't. We can't. We can't. Oh. I love number three so much. I'm so torn. I just like I can't. It's hard to get past any of the others for, because I love number three so much. 
Can I I'm, can I have kind of mad quick? at Aaron for putting two at the forefront again? Because I'm, I'm I'm so sorry. Don't hate me. I'm, I'm I, just to, I just poured it again. I'm considering it. <laughs> I have to now, speak my truth, <laughs> yeah. but you do you, you do you, truth. okay? You so do you. Trenton, Trenton, can I tell you real yeah. quick, Trenton? Yeah. I had three as the front runner, but then as I just eliminated everything else and just went between two and three, yeah. I I might think two yeah. is the better pour. Yeah, he and he, that I bothers me. He muted us and he yeah. went, Aaron, I think I like two better. And he was really upset about it. I'm not happy with this, but two and three are both fantastic. So, yeah, if we don't get one of these, I would love to know where the other one goes because I want to go shopping. So, the nice thing about two is that it is probably, it is, I think it would appeal to the most people, right? To the masses. So, I do agree from that perspective. Number two would appeal to the masses. Number Dude. three is, our, I think, number three is our overall consensus, like, like overall, like, pick. But I do think number two would probably appeal to the most people as a whole. So now here's what I want to hear. Colby, you were on board with me and a lot of other people thinking that this was like thick and rich on glass number three, uh, barrel number 1595. Have you gone back and compared 1595 to 1651 glass number two now that we spent some time with them? I'm yeah, curious I, to hear your opinions. I really like, I like them both. Um, but it seems like three. It's funny because I don't get Aaron's like drying part of it. It's like it coats my mouth and almost makes it feel like <clears throat> a number three. But number two, it doesn't um, – it just tastes way – even less than the proof to me. Like like it's freaking super – I think like, it's an easy drinker for yeah, sure. It's – yeah. Like compared – and not that the other ones are hard to drink or anything like that, but they're just – it's like going back to it, it, it's different. And this is what I love about it. And we tell everybody, like, always go back to the first couple because you're like for us. I, I came in here and I tasted number one and I'm going from zero to 120 proof plus proof. You know what I mean? And then you're going to two. And then when you go back to number one or number two, it tastes completely different because now your yeah. palate's kind of acclimated. It's, you know, it's ready. Mm -hmm. And it's so um, I think number two, like, is a fantastic barrel. Like they're, they're both. I don't you guys wouldn't go wrong with either one of these. Um I think that number two is like the one that would appeal to like the masses and maybe like number three is the one for like the concentrated flavorful whiskey drinker. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? would yeah. say that number three is better on the nose and number two is better on the finish. So again, no, you're, you're both right. Aaron's got to be point. feeling real good right now. The, fin no, no. the finish on two is ridiculous. Yeah. It sticks around so much. It opens up so much. Uh, here's Sorry, the deal. Don't. Here's the deal. I just want people to like the barrel we pick. True. So I agree if, I agree. if it's two or three, I don't care. I have a personal preference. I am not always right. I am not what, did the you be say all your first all. Do what? Did you say your first your first pick already? If you had to choose, oh one? yeah, it was number two. Number two. I number I would two. go for number two, and number three was actually not in my top three. So so wait, hold on one second. So Aaron, if number two was was your was your pick, Trenton and and uh, Kurt, what was number two for you guys? Well, for me, for me, number four was my number two, but I love that. I love an earthy note. I really, really do. Her too. So that was that was my number two, but I'm going to stick with my original thought process. Okay. I still feel I still feel number three is my number one pick so far. Yeah, agree. That's all. <laughs> So I surprised if I disagree. Oh, are you, I would be. I would. Be. Are you gonna say number one, Kurt? Or go ahead. no? Go ahead. Go ahead. I, he said. He said would I'd be surprised if he was different uh, than me. Originally, I I would have said number one, but since nobody else remotely agrees, <laughs> I'm just gonna call that call that a lost cause. Two for me is is more like a really nice, balanced, delicate kind of like dessert kind of mm -hmm. pour for mm -hmm. me. Whereas three at the end, it's just like, it's got a little bit of the the spice. I don't know if it's from the rye or, or what, but it's not as delicate as number three. And, you know, we're, we're trying to pick for the, for the, for the people out there that are, that are supporting us. So. Correct. I think that's the thing I'm in. I I'm in marketing. That's my job. So I think my mind automatically goes to like what the most people will like. Yeah. Can I just like say by default, I, I, I want to say, I go ahead, I Marcus. Go ahead, Marcus. No, no, I agree with Aaron. I mean, I really do. My number one is definitely number three. I mean, it's not even honestly, they're not even close personally, but I do think number two would definitely appeal to the masses by far. It really would. So 
I'll say what I think is that number two, number three is fun, but it is, there's that grain note in there. And when you compare it to number two, it still has a grain note, but it's darker, it's richer, it's more well-rounded. And that has been the, that has been the calling card of number two since the beginning. As soon as we hit it, we said that it was well-rounded and I don't want to hold it against it because it is really, really good. And I feel like number two, and stick with me here, guys, on screen and in chat. I feel like number two is a Hans Zimmerman soundtrack. Like, you know how when you watch Batman or something like that, and it's like there's that space when something happens, and then the bass drops, and it's like, <laughs> that is glass number two. The, the finish like, just one of the it, best it, composers like modern it's, times. It's I not the it's not the strongest <laughs> finish. It's not the brightest flavors. It's not the most in your face pour. But man, oh man, is this thing just it settles in and mm. sets up shop in your back room, y'all, and it takes over. Here's the deal, though. Chat is saying they would rather have an in your face pour than a safe pick. I don't Ooh. think any of these are safe picks. So here's yeah, the deal. Not, not really safe, though. I, here's I the deal. I challenge y'all because you say that, but do you actually mean that? If you get this, that's the yeah. thing. When you spend your actual American dollars on it, is that what you mean? I don't For know. For me, if, if it was like, which, which poor would you remember more? I'd probably remember two just because I feel like the finish is just a, like a smidge longer than three. The, the yes. finish on three is a little bit more spicy, whereas two is a little bit more rich, comforting, like yeah. rich, rich, delicate, rich. desserty. Yeah. Like, why do you I have agree. a dessert after dinner? Because you want to remember, you know, I feel like you want to remember parents. something. Yeah, you want to yeah. remember the parents. That's true. Hey, hey Judge. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, Judge. I think, I think what this relates to is you and I need to hang out more often. And Trent needs to hang out with Aaron. Gosh, Ross. I agree. Cut, I cut agree. Us out. That's, That's what I'm thinking. thinking. That's what it I'm is. thinking. It is. You're spot on, Kurt. You're spot on for sure. <laughs> like, I'm buying number three all day long. I mean, it's not even. They're not even the team. Me too, buddy. Here's me the deal. Personally. May I? May I interject? Course, I'm so man. sorry. I told Josh I wasn't going to talk a lot. Can I here just, I am talking a lot. Can I just say how much I love Colby? Just has this grin on his yes, face. Yes, I see it. There's an S E S E grin on his face, <laughs> seeing us try to deliberate this. So, yeah, I, I, I can't hardly even see the screen. The only thing I can see is his smile. That's it. That's I, I told you guys this was going to happen. We we yeah, yeah. you did yeah you guys warned you, us. you told us you warned us you, you did us. you really did though for sure um <laughs> for me personally three has a drying note on the finish that I would not drink again I would drink it I'd say thank you and I would never drink it again two however is all the things you guys said and then it doesn't have this drying finish where i would drink it again however that's, that's your just biggest me. thing is the drying the drying I, the for me it's the drying yeah it's right. dryingness so you you said your piece i'm done the i end. would i would love to hear from kurt and trenton what you guys think between two and three because yeah, it seems like that's what we're coming down to right it is it's two or three you it really is because aaron and i quote aaron said that number two is spiked tea Yes. Right, Aaron? Sweet tea. Okay. Sweet tea. Spiked oh, sweet tea. tea. Spiked sweet tea. Okay. So go ahead, uh, Kurt and Trenton. Two or three. I'm, I'm going to leave it between you guys. Two and Well, three. you know, Judge, I, I never usually go back on my first impressions. But I can be, you know, I'm not going to be unhappy with anything. Uh, me personally, and please no offense, but um, number five would have been my lowest pick. So as long as we're not arguing about number five, sure. I'm good with that. But but I'm going to stick with number three is is what was my favorite sip of the evening. But does it surprise me one second that Trenton has a different pick than me? No. W would it surprise me that he didn't have a different pick than me? Yes, it would. So yeah. that's just me. Now okay. – you do we if at the end of the day we decide on number two? I'm happy with that. 
Uh, I personally would put up a little bit more of a fight and a debate if we're talking about number five. So Mm. that's where I'm at. That's fair. That's very fair. Thank you very much for that. There are a lot of people in the chat saying that the judge just needs to rule on this. That's uh, by the way. I just want a lot of pressure there, Marcus. I have a rule, but I I can't. I can't do that because I mean, I'm a gentleman, and and Mrs. Judge knows. I mean, I respect Aaron a lot, so I can't. I can't rule the way I want to rule. Here's the deal: (laughs) we're tasting five really good pours. Yeah. Sure. I would not be mad. Honestly, the only one I would say I don't want is number one. The okay. other four, oh, I'd be fine with. Okay. I know. Okay. I know. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I hurt your heart. <laughs> I'm so I liked sorry. You when I heard that you were a Rye fan, and you know, that's kind it's of, just, <laughs> that's a toss it, up right now. It's, it's only because it's in comparison to the others. Had I tasted it on its own, it probably would have been fine. But it's, Compared to all the other, the four other pours, oh. it was the least out mm-hmm. of the four, okay. or out of the five. So, Trenton, what's your thoughts on on, yep. on between these? What do you think? Your turn, buddy. Oh no! <laughs> I, <laughs> to be fair, I wasn't even considering two at all, and then okay. you know, m- m- like my girlfriend Michelle's palate is ten times better than mine. Might and well. I, I w- I'm, I'm curious. I'll bring these home and see what she has to say about it because her palate's phenomenal. But when when Aaron said two, I think because two was kind of the middle of the road for me. I had two in third place. I had I, my order went one, three, two, four, and five. Was was kind of my order. One, two, three. But <laughs> when I heard two, when I tasted two, I was I was really just almost immediately I was like, yeah, this doesn't kind of stand up to one and three for me. But two is just so well rounded. But I don't know. That's tough. We we've I full transparency, we've 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 done probably what eight or nine picks at this point. We yeah. have never been in disagreement about anything. <laughs> so this is a this is kind of new territory for us in, in terms of what we actually end up going with. But same, 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 same. <laughs> same <season. laughs> like, This is the hardest pick we've ever done, to be honest with you guys. And it's, yeah. and it's on a live stream, so we have to make a, a choice like which, right now. Which is a credit so, to Frey Ranch. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, it is. I mean, some fabulous yes. water whiskey. That were, yes, really very is. true. Honestly. It is. Mm-hmm. Ashley and Colby are, I mean, obviously producing just fantastic whiskey across mm-hmm. the board, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So here's the deal, y'all. I know I have opinions, and I state them. But at the same time, these are all really good. So I'm going to be fine with any one of them. So right. take that for what you will. So let's I go ahead. I have no go. bad feelings which way we go either. So I think I'm, we the, I'm watching the live chat and it feels like a lot of people, and maybe I'm just catching people saying this, but they want something that's like different. different. Yeah. Different. I'm mm. seeing that a lot. Yeah. So okay. they don't right. want like the safe one. Because I think we have, we have five people, right? From a choice standpoint, yeah. so let's go ahead and vote. So, Aaron, mm-hmm. what do you want, Aaron? Which 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 bottle? Well, I vote for number two, but I would also be fine with anything that's not number one. <laughs> okay, stay, Aaron. Aaron. Stick with your gut. Go with go with what you you know. So number two is my pick. However, three, four, or five, I'd be fine with. All right. So Aaron wants number two. Yes. But no number. Okay, got it. Okay, no number one. All right. Josh, as her husband, what are you picking? Pick wisely. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. I think, I think, no. Look, we, I think you're we have in the predicament. Separation of church and state here. You, yeah. It's fine. Josh, when it, like, when, it, like, come, when like, it comes to the picking out. a barrel for people, I'm not playing around. I'm no. going to be 100% honest to he what is. my experience is. Yep. And I think, I think while three is very good, I think two is slightly darker. I'm getting like this dark coffee bean note on it, which mm-hmm. I absolutely love. I am casting my ballot for number two with number three being my second number. Like Ooh. Trenton really nailed it. Number two was the Kentucky racehorse that came from the back of the pack and crossed the finish line right at the front. Okay. That was it for me. All right. So Aaron right, for and me, Josh, for me, judge. go ahead. What do you got, Kurt? I'm sorry, buddy. For me, no, judge, no. Or for me, judge, I'm number three. I'm going to stay with that. And <laughs> if something else is picked, that's okay. But if 
five comes up, then we'll have a little bit of debate. For that. Okay. So, so we've got this, two for number two and one for number three, right? So yes. So it looks like Trenton is going to be the deciding vote because no, I am you're the, I am locked I sink I with my man Kurt. In my so opinion, number three, three barrel one five nine five is ridiculously good. I mean, They're this both is good. the Ray Ranch like yeah. like gold level, like platinum. This is ridiculous. So Trenton. Go ahead, uh, Trenton, yeah, what say you? Going to be hey. the deciding factor. I didn't, Gosh, I didn't stay at no, home. Pressure. no pressure. No pressure. No pressure at all, Trenton. <laughs> Trenton did not sign up for this. I know. I feel bad for him in a way, almost. Kind of. You know, we need you're the, the judge. What are you talking about? Right <laughs> you should be. <laughs> so, Trenton well, loves think... to go against me. No. Come on. Okay, hold up. Hold up. The <laughs> chat is saying three, 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 three. I think they're going to be pissed if we don't pick number three. There's a lot of threes There's in the chat. So yeah, of, yeah. But here's There's the glory. They don't know what three and I'm two taste like. Right. Three, three. They don't. Leslie. They don't. Oh my this God. is just yeah. fun. This is dumb. They're also fun. saying no pressure. So <laughs> Down right fun. Did, That's right? fake news. He's going Actually, they're news. lying. <laughs> <laughs> so I like that. Here, here's the thing, right? Uh, Marcus set this whole thing up. His his channel name is the Bourbon Judge. I feel like he needs to be the deciding. Well, uh, I guess with my vote, he will oh, be the deciding. Just make a decision. Yep. You're just trying to make the chat room happy here. <laughs> That's all it does. Hey, Trenton, your out is to vote two with us and then have Marcus's three vote be the deciding factor. <laughs> yeah, hey, there no, we wait, go. no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. It's it's not not it's yeah. it's 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 Trenton, <laughs> Trenton can hang out with, with Josh and Aaron, and I'll come out. I'll come out all day, every day, and hang out with Judge and Cousin Anita. How's that? I appreciate that. That'd be oh, fine. Love yeah. you. Just so you know. <laughs> Your so opinion. Zach Butler in the chat says, we will love whatever it is. And I can promise you guys, Between, two or three, you're going to yeah. love both yeah. of these yeah. for different well, reasons. Well, would, time out. Sure. You may or may not love both of these. I think you're going to love both of these for different reasons. I think three is very good for what it is. Mm, I think but, it's butterscotchy. And hold up, mm. hold up. But if you don't like what it is, Gosh. then you won't like it. Well, that's that's why we're communicating. <laughs> point, like, right. And that's why I don't like well, it. Well, that's, that's what we're here for. As much as two. That's like you're going to really you like it. Aaron, so unless you don't like really good note. Josh said that number three was Dusty, Woody, and Butterscotch. Which yeah, is that's like, right. that's just the bourbon judge all day long. But the number two is what you said. Spike Sweet Tea. Which is Aaron, and I, I like that as well. So again, our deciding vote goes back to Trenton SLB drinks. I didn't Go ahead, for this part. bring us home. <laughs> Toby, right. Toby, and you Ashley need to get home to their family. They have they have things. So let's go ahead and make a decision here. Get it on, buddy. You got it. Okay, it's all, it's all about Trenton so right now. For me, I feel like number three would would really kind of mend well with the folks that love a good rye. It's got a spicy finish, Go. but oh. for the like for me as some, I've loved sweets all my life. I <laughs> I eat candy still to this day. I got some in my desk drawer. It's got a really nice delicate finish, and it, it's something that I would re remember just a, a tad more than the spiciness that I get from number three. So I have okay. to go with number two. Uh. <laughs> okay. Whoa! Gosh, went out. All right. I'm all right. Sure. All right, number two it I is. I respect you as well. <laughs> I'm sure. So, Although, we are going I have with... to say I'm not, I'm not unsatisfied. <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> I'm sure you're not. Number one. She's yeah. very satisfied. Like, All right. that, this whole thing moved from three to two by you. Good job. Like, it did. It really did. <laughs> no, no, real quick. Real, real quick. Barrel number Ashley, two, Ashley and Colby, I would love to hear what you guys think about oh, two. Question. Now having sat in the point. glass, opened up, all that stuff. It's what do you feel about glass two? Two, two. I could drink two every day. Like, it's one of those ones that um, it just, it yeah. just, it's a really good flavored bourbon. That, I love, like, I love the finish. It hybrid. really brings you back to that. Yeah. Like, take another sip. Yep. And it is, and that finish like just sticks in your mouth. It's still in my like. I'm still like getting yeah. it. And, and to me, like a lot of times, finish is also super important to me because it makes you want to come back and take another sip. Mm -hmm. And so. Yep. I, I, right. I, you guys couldn't go wrong with either one of these. You really can't. You truly can't. 
No. It Never was so in my life that would I have thought that would have been a deciding factor for <laughs> absolutely anything. You were. Trigger, you were very important. Oh, sure. man. That's a lot of pressure. There's such say, a though, chocolatey I mean, note on glass, too. It's so chocolatey and rich. <laughs> and Trenton saying the candy note, like just yeah. coming back to that sweet two note. I, look, I don't have a sweet tooth. I have a mouth full of sweet teeth. Yes, you do. And glass yeah. number two is Ooh, a crowd good. pleaser in that sense. I, I, really so is. I tasted all of these and ranked them all within the first 30 minutes of this live stream, which is, yeah, <laughs> about an hour ago. I ranked them all an hour ago. Did you? Okay. And, and number two is my top. It was. So right. these three minutes I'm not mad at this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would have been okay with anything because these are all really good. Golly, they're both so I good. Can, I can't be mad at any of them. 1651. It's at. It is. So 1651 is the choice. Um, I think it really comes down to the fact that Frey Ranch obviously does a fantastic job of just yes. making flat out amazing whiskey. So Colby, Ashley, number one, above all, thank you so much for just making great whiskey. I mean, it's just fantastic. So we really appreciate everything. Thank you both so much. No, thank you. It's super fun. You guys are fun to hang out with. Yeah, and it's this way is awesome. better than being stuck outside right now. <laughs> just right like you're stuck. stuck in the mud. You're stuck in the, in the water <laughs> truck right now. So this is way better. So thank you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, Trenton and Kurt, it. Josh and Aaron, honestly, you guys are, I mean, I love your channels. Thank you both so much for kind of joining in and, you know, uh, for this collaborative pick. You guys are both such such great channels. So thank you both so much. Honestly, I love the palette. I love the the great analysis i mean i mean without aaron hell we wouldn't even be here right now so aaron no thank you so no, much no, no 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 <laughs> you guys made your own decisions yeah this is not, put it on, not on me with, without aaron without hey, aaron i'd have had with number one great decision. <laughs> i mean we had great whiskey to choose from aaron so we love you yeah, aaron. Hey, you look Whoa. if you guys get this barrel and you don't like it send your hate mail to no. aaron at <laughs> stuff and whiskey at gmail. <laughs> no, I mean, oh my gosh you guys uh, <laughs> This is an amazing oh. pick. So yeah. congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. They were no, this yeah. is def definitely a very uh overall, like you know, group pick for sure. I and I agree with I think uh Kurt said this for sure. The only one for me that I think was like a different kind of a lane, if you will, was number five. And I I don't know what it was about it, but number five, I'm like, if there's anyone that's to me different than a normal free ranch kind of a palette yeah. nose palette finish number five was it i was actually okay with one through four overall i just personally love number three but i yep. love the hell out of number two too uh, as well I so thank you. Like oh, yeah. Five. oh yeah. yeah i was kind of <laughs> good with two three and four but i yeah. am curious now that we have we have officially picked a barrel number two we have my goodness this is the hardest pick i've ever been on because yeah. three and two <laughs> true, are both so great y'all yeah. but but ages can you oh. disclose the ages of the barrels in question between two and three? Yes. So um, two is going to be actually younger than three. Mm -hmm. And I don't know exactly ah. how long, but probably like five or six months. Like not a crazy okay. amount, but a, yeah. little, okay. a little bit younger. The six oldest months. barrel was number five. five and yep. the youngest barrel ah. was number one. Yeah. So actually these... Are wow. almost so these are actually like just so you guys know these are the order that we filled the barrels in yeah so like you guys picked our 1651st barrel we ever filled up and um so obviously 1817 is going to be the youngest but 1462 is going to be the oldest and that was a couple hundred barrels which was quite a ways like it's probably eight or ten months like from back then when we were producing how much we were producing Okay, that's really cool. So nice. I went ahead and awesome. added in a uh, shim from a uh, keg and bottle. So shim, okay. thank you, number one, for bringing us all together. Honestly, this all started with you mm -hmm. and uh, keg and bottle and the partnership with, uh, of course, with Frey Ranch. So thank you so much, shim. Really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Not yeah. sure if you can hear me. Can you hear me? We yes. got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Right on. It's fun times, guys. So I can't yeah. wait to taste yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, indeed, indeed. No, great, great, great. Shim, did you get these picks too? Did you get to try these? I usually do, but we we um had just enough to to make sure that you guys all had two ounces um, times five, and then judges had some leak, so yeah, we wouldn't have had any spares. If if you need, well, I'll send you some of mine so you can kind of so you can rank them, and I'd be interested to see kind of where you where you rank right in the lineup. 
That's awesome. Rough, Thanks so much, Jim. Three and mess everything up. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little bit late. <laughs> That's all right. That's can I, say one, that. can I say all. one thing, Judge? Yeah, can of I course. say one I'm thing? Hey, Definitely, hey, I appreciate this. was so much fun here. I had a ton of fun. Was I, appreciate, fun. I appreciate both your channels. I follow you both. And I usually yeah. never miss a show. And I try to comment once in a while because I am always wanting to learn. And you cannot learn if you just focus on your own self. So I appreciate true. all your viewpoints and I love both of your channels. So thanks for inviting us. We had a great time. Trent and I will have this little rift between us for a few days, but eventually it'll go away. It'll go away. <laughs> we, have record, we have to record tomorrow's show after this. Yeah, we do. That's okay. That's how we roll. You know, that's Nothing how we roll. Thanks, all. Thank thanks you so, so much, much, man. Bert. I appreciate it. I appreciate you, Josh and Aaron. I appreciate you both. No, we, yeah. we, that, that's I wonderful. appreciate that's you wonderful. guys. Yeah, now this is uh great. I mean, honestly, between SLB stuff and whiskey, and of course, Free Ranch and Keg and Bottle, the overall just you know, kind of combination, you know, combination of everyone coming together. Thank you all for your time. I uh, really do appreciate it. I know how busy Kobe and Ashley are with you know, of course, producing all of this great whiskey, and then of course, you know, Shim from Keg and Bottle. And then obviously SLB and stuff and whiskey with just producing fantastic quality content day after day, week after week. Thank you all so much. Uh, this has been great. And uh, as we say in our business, cheers, everyone. Yeah. So, cheers. cheers. My glass is empty. Wait. Cheers to everyone. Wait, this is not empty. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic bottle. Barrel. Indeed. Mm -hmm. mm. Bam. Mm. Yeah, it's a good problem to have when they're all really good. Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. That's really. a fact. That's a fact.